The risk for colon cancer when a close relative has precancerous polyps is uh, not clear because there's lack of data. And current guidelines for colonoscopies, uh, they vary from ranging from the United States Services Task Force with no guidelines to the American Cancer Society and the American College of Gastroenterology with definite recommendations. So why do you think that there's such a, a variety of opinions about recommending colonoscopies for people that have relatives that have had polyps? <laughs> well, you have to keep in mind that medicine's a business today. It's not so much a service. And there are turf wars going on. And in the case of the American Cancer Society and the American College of Gastroenterology, it's very obvious what's happening. I mean, the business that is generated from doing this procedure of doing colonoscopies is tremendous. It finds a lot more people to study, which gives doctors more work. It gives the gastroenterologists, and particularly, an edge in income that way. And for the American Cancer Society, it's a, it's a very interesting situation because what's happening there is that they have a close alliance and they're funded by, to a large extent, by the pharmaceutical industry. So the more colonoscopies that are done, the more cancers and other kinds of treatments that are going to be necessary that require the services of big pharma, such as the uh, oncology services that use all these drugs to treat cancer. But you know, don't most people have a relative that's probably had a polyp? I Indeed. mean, that seems like it would bombard the business of colonoscopies. Well, and people have gotten scared because when they say precancerous polyp, everybody's going, well, I don't want cancer, so I better go do my colonoscopy. But the whole point is that being raised by this article that was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in May of 2012 really brings to light that we don't have the data that we should have to justify that. And that's why the United States Preventive Services Task Force has come out and said, we don't have an opinion on it. We don't think we, sh we could lot we can justify telling everybody who has a family member who has a, a polyp that has some precancerous uh, potential to go do a colonoscopy. Well, one of the things I was surprised about was that they were recommending that if you do have a relative that has a precancerous polyp, uh -huh. that you start getting a colonoscopy either at age 40 yeah. or 10 years Even younger than what that relative was when they found the polyp. Yeah, well, I mean, that again it's got two sides to it. Of course they're trying to be conservative. They're trying to protect the patients against uh, cancers that they might have that could be, could be prevented if we found them early. And there's a point to that. But, but colonoscopies aren't innocuous things. And they're, they're associated with perforations in about 1 in 200 cases or a GI bleed that requires hospitalization and transfusions. So you're looking at a taking a person that doesn't have any symptoms and subjecting them to this test and then based on that test uh, if there are colon polyps that are precancerous really doing frequent reassessments of what's going on. Do you think that more studies are needed to show the science behind this? Absolutely and that was the point that they made in the Annals of Internal Medicine that there wasn't science for it and we should take a look at it and the United States Preventive Services Task Force had a point so we should be taking a careful look at that because 30 to 50 percent of people have precancerous polyps, but only five to 10 percent uh, of those polyps are advanced and worrisome. The other 90 to 95 percent, they're there, but they're not a big issue. So mm -hmm. people are getting uh, taken advantage of. They're being made paranoid and thought that if they don't do their colonoscopy, uh, uh, particularly if, if someone has a colon polyp, that uh, you know they're being they're taking risks that are unnecessary. Okay, personally, if you have a patient that comes to you and says, "My twin brother had a precancerous colon polyp," uh -huh. should I have a colonoscopy? Uh -huh. I'd say let's look at the pathology report. What did it show? Was this a kind of cancer or a kind of precancerous lesion that's likely to lead to a colon cancer? Or is this just a polyp that, yes, it could have a precancerous potential, but not that often? That's what I would look at from that point of view. And every other situation, too, because we're doing too many colonoscopies. When you look at just doing screens for colonoscopies, we've got great information on drsabuta.com. Yeah. If you put in there, uh, do you need a colonoscopy in the search box, you'll get lots of interesting art articles that will go over why the United States Preventive Services Task Force has taken the position that it has. We overdo, in general, 
most of the of the screening tests that are looking for early cancers, early heart disease, early stroke, lots of things. And what it does is it generates a lot of business and everybody that's in the medical field likes the business because that means more income, uh, but it's not the best thing for our patients necessarily. So in the case of familial uh, precancerous polyps, you need to know how serious was that finding. And if it wasn't much, you probably are going to fall into the risk of of not having a particularly increased risk, but until we have the data that shows one way or the other that this is something that's a real concern, we're not gonna know. So you pay your nickel and you take your chances.